hour analysis of the hands-on guide to dissecting malicious software by Michael Sikorsky and Andrew Honig. Thanks for the great book. I'm recording my work on the labs and I'm not affiliated with the authors. So the book recommends we create a virtual machine with Windows XP performing for performing the labs. Uh, installing VMware Player and installing an operating system in it are generally very easy and there are plenty of tutorials online for if you get stuck. I downloaded about 25 tools which were listed throughout the book. Appendix B has a lot more tools you can choose from and there's even more not listed. Um, I even created a blog page with links to these tools. So the page is right here. I'll put it in the uh, notes, the YouTube video notes uh, description section. Chapter 1 concerns basic static analysis, scanning the suspected malware uh, files for hints to the purpose. Oh, by the way, I just need to go back and uh, Put, show that there's a link here to the book. Uh, I s skipped right over that. It'll be in the note, in the uh, description of the video too. Uh, I bought it on Amazon. Okay. Uh, so anyway, for chapter one, the tools I used are PEID, which is a nice little tool to show packing and other information about the program. Um, to start off with, and then strings is a sys internals program which I'm not sure if you know about sys internals but it's a, a package of uh, tools provided for free by Microsoft uh, Mark Arsinovich I believe well he started it I don't know if he still maintains everything but uh, Ida Pro Free also shows strings and I used that some in this video but decided going to the strings program may be a little easier even though it's not a GUI. There's other tools out there for that but uh, PE view um, it shows inform <coughs> excuse me information about um, different sections in the portable execute executable that's what PE stands for and it apparently is the most common type of exe file in Windows at this time. Uh, Dependency Walker shows imports, which are functions outside the program. They exist in DLLs, which can be executed. Uh, that you know shows information about what the program may be doing. And then Resource Hacker lets you browse or view objects in the resource section and extract data from it. I'm on chapter one, lab one. Upload the files. Okay, uh, so there's two files. By the way, uh, I should mention this first is you have to go to practical malware analysis to get all these lab examples. Okay, there we go. So I go over to labs here. Now I'm going to upload, I should have left that open, the virus total. As they recommend. This is the exe file. Let's scan it been analyzed before so I'm not going to reanalyze it. Detection ratio 17 out of 57. Okay we have that. Now I'm going to go click home and we have to there's a DLL for lab 1-1. One -one. Scan it. Already analyzed. View last analysis. 
Okie dokie. Number two, the question number two out of seven questions. When were these files comp compiled? Okay, uh, there's a tool that I can use to go in there, and I think it's PEB. Okay, compile time, 12, 19, 2010. I'll go into the DLL. I okay. The DLL. Oh, this button down here, that's, that's a trick. I'm going to change that to DLL. And the same date and time until 19, 2010. Okay, question three. Are there any indications that either of these files are packed or obfuscated? So I go into PEID to find that out. Executables. I'm one for one. So, I click on this button to find out, but it tells you some useful information, but nothing that's asked in the question. Looks like it's a Microsoft Visual C program. So these three buttons I click, not packed. Okay, now we got one down, one to go. Change this to all files. Go to the DLL. Not packed, okay. That closes that. Do any imports hint at what the malware does? Imports are shown in dependency walker. So the lab, or the book, uh, chapter one text describes this window as the one that shows the DLLs. This one shows the ones that are imported, the functions that are imported, and this shows all the functions that could be imported. I'm unclear as to what they mentioned about this, but you can click on these to see that the, the read through these to see what it's doing. Copy file, create file. Now, granted, I've been through these ex this exercise, um, all the ones in chapter one already. Um, so I understand what I would have guessed. I, I really wouldn't have known. I would have thought copy file and create file. Yeah, they, they would have done something, but I wasn't sure if anything else, what it was doing. They do say uh, in the answer that those indicate it's moving files. Okay, so it's uh, what is it? Uh, memory allocation. Can't really tell. I I don't know. Are there any other files or host base indicators you could look for on infected systems? Okay, so. Since I read the answer, I already know it comes from strings and strings. I go into Ida Pro Free, which has a strings function. Okay, so this window over on the right is strings. It's the one that's useful. So we do have files listed down here, and one of them is kernel kerny 132.dll. That's not an L at the end of kernel. That's one. These are the two files. But let me open the binary or the uh, DLL. DLL lab one dash one. Overwrite. I guess that didn't matter. Strings. Okay, so we have an IP address down here. 
and that is important. So we have two things, the IP address and those that file kerny one dot thirty two dot dll number six out of seven what network based indicators could be used to find this malware on infected machines uh, and that turns out it's this number one twenty seven if 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 you spot this using an um, intrusion detection system then you should flag it as an alert okay what would you guess the purpose of these files is? I have no idea. I wouldn't know, but apparently the answer says it looks like it's a downloader. Let me, let me reread that real quick. I'm coming to the back of the book. The DLL is probably back to where the EXE is used to install or run the DLL. All right, one thing that I failed to do on this exercise 1-1 one -one was look at the imports of the DLL. I don't think I did that. That's important. Alright. And this this is good for a little exercise. They say sometimes that um, the imports are done by ordinal. So the function name is not listed here. But you have a cross-reference table down here. That's basically what this is. Uh, you, can, you can get the name from here. So if we see 3 is the ordinal for this first import, then we go to 3 down here and go across, and it's closed socket. Okay, we go to 4, it's connect. We go to 9. Let me sort this by ordinal. H tons. I don't know what that is. I think I looked that up before. I didn't, never figured it out. The 11 is inet address. 16 is receive. 19, 22, 23. 19 is send. 22 is shut down. 23 is socket. So this has to do with um, sending and receiving something. And as I know from the uh, text in the answer, it apparently has something to do with getting the kerny132.dll. So uh, anyway, I went through this this right here and we did this exercise for WS32-32 and that got us some information, but this right here and this right here, they don't provide much information, I don't believe. At least, not according to the answer from the way I understand it. The one that really gleans information is WS2-32 DLL. That'll get us, we'll be seeing that in the future in many malware apparently. Okay, I'm analyzing lab 1-2 right here, that exe, and this is um, <coughs> this is in virus total. Question one, upload to virus total. So the answer says, um, written in the book, it says detection ratio of 3 out of 57. So clearly, a lot more have determined that it's virus since the book was written. So the book says in the answer that um, this this shows the usefulness of virus total getting the three out of fifty seven because if we were using one of those that wasn't the three out of fifty seven, then you know like a single scanner on our system we wouldn't get any information but we are here we're getting uh, additional information but. I've seen other virus, to, you know, well, other files that have been scanned that have uh, a very low number of hits, and I've assumed that they're false positives in some cases. I mean, but it is useful information, I agree. I mean, you have to take all your information as a whole and evaluate it at the end. 
Uh, this is way better than just running one single scanner, but it makes me think, were my hits on previous files false positives? It makes me nervous. Uh, anyway, I run scans on my system regularly, and it, they seem fine. Uh, that's not to say there isn't viruses on my system, but... Okay, so we go to the next part, which is question two. Obfuscated. Are there inter in any indications that this is obfuscated or packed? So what I do is PEID, but there's other ways you can analyze it by looking at header information. I just go in here and bring up lab one. Well, it says UPX right here. Now, in the answer, it says that it was not detected as uh, UPX packed, but that could be a previous version of PEID uh, that had the problem, you know, and didn't detect it. So this is good. Um, they want us to unpack things that we can unpack. Okay, fast checks is not packed, but these other two, entropy. I'm not sure exactly what how entropy comes into play, but okay. Well, it's packed, and what I'm going to do is use an unpacker, which is UPX, and and that's the fifth tool. I mentioned four tools I use. But uh, for this chapter one, this fifth tool, I'll go. And then UPX 391W DIR. Okay, uh, so UPX minus uh, D decompress. Now, the thing about it is, when I decompress, it overwrites. But I'm using a working version of the lab here, so I have, I have the original saved off, and I can always download it later if I ever make a mistake. And it's been one does your 290XE unpacked file. Yeah, it overwrites, um, and the file size was 3K before, but now it's 16K. And when I run PEID. this point. This is Microsoft Visual C. It doesn't say UPX in there. And it's not packed. Um, and we have something we can analyze with multiple programs. Dependency Walker. I'm not going to worry about that. The desktop. Now the desktop in here, yeah it is there. Change the name a little bit. I'm going to put a lowercase l. No matter. So we have multiple files here. DLLs which have imports. Now a couple things I noticed right away were the service, start service and create service. I knew the first time I came in here that's a big deal. Uh, that has something to do with this. The malware is trying to create a service for itself. And then it's doing something with the internet right here. Now, in the answer, uh, they mentioned that kernel 32 DLL and ADV APT 32 DLL have very common imports. These are very common for all, even, even um, valid, uh, benign PE files. So they say it's not of very much use, but let me double check that. Now that what I meant was kernel and MSV CRT. These two don't have um, anything indicative of malware. They're common in all programs. These two are the ones that have the service related uh, imports and the internet related imports. So I'm going to run strings now. Open this up. New. Start analysis. Strings. Okay, 
see what we have here. We have this e, uh, HTTP address URL. Let's see if there's anything else in there. Okay, so that we have more information now that we unpacked and analyzed it. Okay, lab one three upload to virus total. What close is that? That's what I wanted. Scan it. And views a bunch. A bunch of hits here. I wonder what else it says here. File detail. Packer identified. So we. That's very good information. We. It's an identified as FSG 1.0. Because I know the answer. It says um, it can't be unpacked or won't be. Do any imports? So I guess we have to look at the imports that do exist. Tennessee Walker. Uh, Couple there that's not useful, and then the final as well. I want to run strings on this. Okay, new. Next, start analysis. Strings. Okay. Uh, this doesn't give us very much useful information for a host based indicator or our uh, like network signature or something like that. Go to the back. One dash three. Files packed and we can't unpack it at this time is the answer to two. Three is the question can't be answered without unpacking. Four, the question can't be answered without unpacking. Okay. In detailed analysis, we open the file in Dependency Walker and see that it does have an import table, but it imports only two functions. Packed files often import only these two functions. It says chapter 18 uh, uh, shows how to unpack FSG. Upload the virus total. Forty three out of fifty seven detected. Okay, this is a uh, Win32exe file for the Windows GUI subsystem. <coughs> Packer identified Armadillo version 1.71. Um, two, are there any indications that the file is packed or obfuscated? Well, virus total said Armadillo, but. Uh, See if so. What are the indicators that it's packed? Okay, that's one of the indicators. Virus total. 
get the files packed, unpack if possible. <clears throat> I'm going to use another tool. PEID. is not packed. Alright. Okay, uh, three. When was the program compiled? Okay, we can see that in PE view. Image NT headers. Image file header 2019. <coughs> Excuse me, that's in the future. All right, not valid. All right. Do any? <coughs> excuse me. Do any imports hand at the program's functionality? If so, which imports are they? And what do they tell you? Let me go into depends dependency Walker. DLL gets thread information, creates a thread, creates a file, opens a process. When exec means, uh, now I've read this in the answer already. When exec means to run a program, which is really useful information. And then write a file, that, that's important too. Lots of good, good information there. MSV CRT. I don't think there's anything useful in there. And then ADV API 32.dll. Uh, it has privilege related information, uh, privilege related functions. Alright. Next question, five. What host or network-based indicators could be used to identify this malware on infected machines? Well, uh, normally they mean go into strings. That's where I can find that type of information. Instead of going into IDA Pro, I'm going into um, the strings function assist internal suite. like those DLL import functions are listed up here. And we have system32 wupdate mgr.exe. That could be a host based indicator. winup.exe, host base. Um, when exact's a function, import. And these are all imports. But further down here we have this URL, which can be a network based indicator. <coughs> it's getting a file from the internet. Okay, so uh, number six the file has one resource in the resource section. Use Resource Hacker to examine the resource and then use it to extract the resource. Okay, I'll do that again because I've, I've already done that, but let me delete it. It's right there. Okay, so in order to demonstrate, I'll go into Resource Hacker, File, Open.
question. Save resources binary file. Uh, Resource.exe. Okay. And then I can go in and look at it. Oh, potentially harmful stuff. Software. Very interesting. total scan it 42 out of 57 view last analysis This PEID Armadillo. I wonder why it's given that. Maybe there's something in there that's compressed or something. Let's go look in PE view. Image file header. 2011, that's more useful information. The other one said 2019, the date in the future. Okay, let's see what else we have in here. Oh, this, this, uh, this R data section is where we have the imports for the um, DLLs. I missed that on the last um, lab. Finding a program. Get a temporary path. Get a Windows directory. This I'm not sure what to make of it. Download to file. Okay, we do have some information. I think that's all that we can get. Let's see. What can you learn from the resource? I think. Oh, uh, did I do strings? I don't think I did strings on the resource. I always go down to the bottom of the screen, but it brings up the host's taskbar in addition in, to the uh, guest taskbar. But when you press the start key, only, only the guest taskbar comes up, so that's a little trick. Still trying to get used to it. Looks like it has the same string there, the same URL, and the same file name. 